since 1947, which is the year of the flying saucer in Roswell, Hollywood has been promoting a romantic fantasy idea of angels coming down and falling in love with human women. For example, 1947, some of you may remember this, maybe not you're old enough to have seen it, but to have seen it on TV, The Bishop's Wife, Cary Grant and Loretta Young, where Cary Grant plays a dapper angel. And guess what happens? He falls in love with a human woman. Imagine that. Then in 1987, 40 years later, we have Wings of Desire, which is a European movie, which has an angel fall for a human woman. Then just so nobody feels left out, we have the movie, same year, 87, Date with an Angel, in which a gorgeous blonde female angel gives up her angelic nature to fall in love with a human male. Then we have the thing you see up there, The Preacher's Wife, which is basically a remake of The Bishop's Wife. And in this case, we have the handsome Denzel Washington, who everybody is like, yeah, he's really good looking. Probably better looking than Cary Grant, in fact. And he nearly breaks up a preacher's marriage because he's, you know, having thoughts about his the preacher's wife and actually courts her because the preacher is too busy being a preacher. Then we have Prophecy 2 in 1998. Here, a good angel assumes human form and to sire a child by a mortal woman to save humanity from the fallen archangel Gabriel's evil plans. Excuse me, chapter and verse on that one. Uh, and then uh, most recently, as far as I know, The City of Angels in 1998, which is a remake of Wings of Desire. Notice how Hollywood has so few new ideas with high-octane stars like Meg Ryan and Nicolas Cage. And all of these are, what are they doing? They're promoting the idea of, oh, you know, human women are so sexy and so beautiful that if an angel comes down here, he's just going to trip all over his wings and harp and fall head over heels for this woman. You know, is this just Hollywood being romantic or is there a more sinister agenda here? Well, Yeshua warned us in Luke 17, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Well, we're definitely in the last times, amen? I mean, Hebrews 1, 2 says we were in the last times back when Hebrews was written. So the only sin, as I mentioned, specifically mentioned in Genesis 6, is this intermingling of fallen angels with human women. Thus, it's only natural that beginning right after the Roswell incident, Hollywood would start acclimating us to the romantic possibilities for ladies to have affairs with angels. Of course, angels would always treat you better. In all of these movies, the angels are much better at courting women. Of course, they're sexier. And they just do things that no human male can do, you know. So what woman wouldn't fall in love with an angel? Especially if it looks like Denzel Washington, you know. Anyway, um, from the Bible, a few further points need to be explained. Angels, and I already touched on this, in their natural condition cannot procreate with humans. That relates to Matthew 22:30. Angels have glorified human bodies of flesh and bone. They're very much like what we will be in the resurrection. Okay? Um, so therefore, that's why an angel cannot possess a person. Only a demon can possess a person. Because you can't get two bodies in here. There's only room for one physical body within this shape. Okay. Now, an interesting thing here. Adam and Eve may not have originally had blood in their veins. You ever think about that? Notice what Adam says to Eve. He says, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Nothing about blood. And some Bible commentators believe, and as do I, that the fruit that Adam ate and Eve ate was a grape. And then when they ate that forbidden fruit, it transformed them somehow. It changed their DNA and they got whatever used to be in their bodies. And some people believe it was actually light. The light of Yahweh that flowed through every vein in their body. And that's where they lived forever. And that's what we're going to be in the resurrection. You remember what it says? It says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. So when we're in heaven, even as a resurrected being in the end of time, we're not going to have blood in our veins. We're going to have something altogether more wonderful. So anyway... Something happened to them and blood flowed into their veins 
and with it came mortality. Okay. Now, it's interesting, this use of the grape, because you know the grape has this kind of interesting ambivalence in Scripture. On the one hand, it's used in the Passover. You know, Yeshua used it in the Last Supper, the fruit of the vine. But yet, on the other hand, if you want to be a really righteous, on-fire Israelite and take a Nazarene vow, you're not allowed to touch anything of the grape. Not even raisins, not grapes, not wine, not grape juice, not anything. I'd also point out the fact that there's some miracles that happen that kind of direct our attention in this way. Just as a, for instance, the, um, the turning of the Red Sea into blood, the turning of water into wine at the wedding at Cana by Yeshua. You know, those, those are two examples where there's this strange relationship between a clear, pure liquid versus blood slash wine. Now, in order... Let's see. Let me go back. In order for these angels to be able to reproduce, what they have to do is drink human blood. And that's where it gets pretty gross because, of course, this is something Yahweh forbids throughout the entire Bible. In doing so, they would have lost much of their angelic power, but probably not their angelic intellect, which is truly formidable. This is additionally the origin of the vampire cult from Eastern Europe which has been with us since the dawn of time. And this is interesting, too, because uh, ancient legends tell us that supposedly the place where these B'nai Elohim first came down was in Sidon, which is a, a region in the Holy Land area. And then they went north into what today would be the Balkans, Hungary, Romania, places like that. And that's where they actually settled. And these are, this is today where, this is the place where the vampire legends come. The idea of, of these supernatural beings that drink blood and live forever. Well, what if these supernatural beings that drink blood and live forever aren't dead humans? What if they're fallen angels instead? But that's a whole other talk. Um, this is also why Yahweh forbade the drinking of blood. Because as he says, the blood is the life. The life is in the blood. And it's a great curse to drink blood. The children that they had would have been superhuman men of renown because of the angelic side of their nature. But their sin was so grievous that Yahweh drowned the entire world to keep this from proliferating. Some might say, well, this happened a long time ago. This happened, you know, millennia ago. It isn't around today. There's not giants walking around today. Well, that isn't really true. After the flood, the scriptures still freely speak of giants. Goliath, of course, is the best known example. Everybody knows about Goliath. And there's the, we've already mentioned, the Anakim, the Rephaim, all these different races that were in the promised land. And they had to go in there. Why do you think the, the spies that Moses sent into the land, they came back and they were all wimpy and they said, well, they're big and we're like grasshoppers next to them. Well, that was probably a slight contradiction. But yet, you know, I have seen pictures of unearthed skeletons from that region of the earth where there's a thigh bone that's more than 10 feet long. Now, you figure, okay, my thigh bone's probably about two and a half feet long. So if you kind of extrapolate that, you're talking about something that makes Goliath look like a midget. Just enormous beings. Um, finally, there's the verse we already mentioned in the New Testament where Paul cautions about women and angels how women should keep their heads covered for the sake of the angels. If the angels are no longer being tempted of after Calvary, why bring this up? Then the final point on this is notice what it says in Genesis 6-4. Then there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. So that's very clearly stating by the author, who I believe was Moses, that even after the flood, there were still occasionally giants running around. These fallen angels are still around today, I believe, using their minds to make up for the lost angelic abilities. Because remember, in the old days, before they fell, these angels would go boing, boing like this and cross the universe. They could leave the throne of the Almighty, which is billions of light years from here, and instantly be here on earth. They had to give all that up when they fell. 
They are still driven by Satan to interbreed with humans.